and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how we I'm going to transform this piece, this little pine piece. Pine is found in many homes and so I'm hoping today will inspire you to have a go because quite frankly it will be an easy process. Today this piece is going to be going into my spare bedroom and I have decided that I am going to only paint the sides, the back, the top and the knobs are going to be kept natural. We will be waxing those and showing you how to do that later. To start with this piece has already been prepared. We've already sanded it and sugar soaked it. That process we are showing in another video, an earlier video of ours, so please feel free to have a look at that first and then you can follow the steps of this. This little piece, um, I'm going to, I've taken already taken off all the knobs. This particular one is very easy um, because it's just a screw and it comes off quite simply. And some particular drawers they have a um, goes through to the drawer and there's a, a nut and you can just undo them and take them off. I also want to tell you a tip about painting drawers. These um, are a little bit to, to have a little think about because there's two types of drawer in my in what I my experience. I call it wiggle room. This this particular piece, as you can see wiggles, slides in and out very freely, all the drawers do so and so with that my plan will be to actually paint the outside giving it a nice clean edge and we'll be masking that up shortly um, and I'll be showing you how to do that but I always like that because if the drawer is left open and let's face it we all have people in the home that do that it looks neat and tidy before you can shut it. Some drawers are very tight fit and so if you're painting those you're putting layers on and it becomes even stiffer you can't shut it. So my tip to you is if the drawer is tight and it fits well leave it in place and paint it in situ and that will still give you a nice clean line but you'll be able to use the drawer. What I'm going to show you now is how to mask up your piece to give it those clean lines. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to mask up your drawers and the actual piece as well um, to give it the nice clean lines. Have the masking tape and I normally do it all, try to do it in all one piece but I'm going to do it in sections. So what I've done is right down here where the uh, tongue and groove, no not tongue and groove, dovetail, dovetail thank you, is in here and I call that, that that's the kind of the cutoff point for me there. I'll try and push it down hard so it's a nice seal. And then I'm going to do the underneath as well because then you don't have to be too precious about your brush strokes. corner there again nice and tight finish there upside down and coming to the other side again marrying up the dovetail and also I do the inside which you think maybe is a bit overkill, but to me, I don't have to be too careful. I then have a nice clean edge again. 
when I finish painting and remove the masking tape. Again, running your finger right along to make sure you've got that nice, nicely firmly stuck down. So that's the drawer ready to go, except just these little uh, screws here where the uh, knobs have been. And what we're going to do here is just get a small piece of tape, and literally just wrap it round and that will just give the protection. Too much paint on there won't be a good thing for when you put the knobs back on, hence I just do that. And they will just come off when we're ready. I will do that drawer and then obviously all the other drawers, but the other thing I'm going to do, I'll just put that on the floor so it'll fall off, is for also for neatness and to show um, that there's no pine showing when the drawers are going in and out. As you can see, there's a gap. If I didn't paint in, in the inside, you'd see the pine and that's not such a good look that I'm wanting. So I'll get down on my knees and cut a smallish piece. What I'm going to do is just stick the tape about, I don't know, quarter of a centimetre in. So not too much because again, layering it up will make it stiffer. So we're just going to have a small layer there and cut it in smaller pieces, manageable pieces. And going along. Down, just keeping a fairly straight line on that. Again, just for a bit of neatness. And then the side here. Oops. Feels a bit like Blue Peter today. There we go. So that is masked up here. I've also got to mask the top because obviously I don't want paint on this because I'm going to be waxing it. I'm going to be doing all the drawers, taking them out and doing exactly the same on each drawer hole as well. So I finished masking up the drawers and the carcass and so we're now ready for the fun bit, painting. Just a few things to start off with. Here's my brush, one and a half inch. The important thing to remember with chalk paint is it needs to be synthetic. That's all we need to know. So that's ready to go. Here's our paint. I am using the two and a half litre size because I've got an awful lot of pieces to paint uh, shortly. So I'm gonna take the lid off. Any paint that has been uh, sitting around on the shelf uh, will need a stir. I use a chopstick. We might have one of those around your house. Uh, really useful. So giving it a good stir because it can separate and it's important that you get it well mixed. Okay, I think that should be well mixed now wasting any paint, I'll brush it off. I'm 
move those out of the way and now we will start painting. So you can all see, dipping my brush in and just taking the residue off, not too overloading. And we'll just show you immediately, you can see the coverage that I'm getting one coat at the moment. I'm going with the grain of the wood. That's usually the rule on most pieces. So as you can see, the coverage is wonderful. I love moving the brush up and down. Don't worry if you get anything on the masking tape, that will all be coming off later. You may remember when I was talking about drawers and wiggle room. If possible, you do the sides going onto the masking tape as well, so you're getting that neat edge. But just a, a thin coat is what we're looking for there. So we don't build up too many thick layers. Same again with the bottom. Turning it around, show you the sides again. And always with the first coat, don't worry if you miss pieces, it's not as even as you'd want. It's just the first coat, treat it like a base coat. The second coat will certainly even things out for you. And there's the top done as well. Just to finish off, a little tip. If I've done that, I would have put a brush stroke that way. Because the grain of the wood's going that way, I just brush it out and make sure I've got a nice, even top with all the brush strokes going the right way. There we go, only another three to go, and the carcass. I've now finished painting all the drawers. I'm going to start on the carcass. Dipping my brush in again. I'm going to go at starting at the bottom. There's no right or wrong. You can start at the top if you want. I always, this is the routine I have, always at the bottom. As you can see, I'm going with the grain of the wood. A lovely, lovely coverage. What paint is that, Jackie? I thought it would be time to tell you all about the Vizanti paint I'm using. Uh, Authentico Vizanti, it's called, and it's the matte finish, giving a lovely, lovely chalk finish, matte finish. And there are other ranges which we do cover in our other videos, uh, but this one has been very popular um, because Authentico have created something that you don't need to wax. You might have heard some chalk paints you do need to wax. For this particular range you don't because it's got a waterproof barrier in it allowing it to be used even outside your outside furniture and we'll have uh, samples of that on a another area as well to see what you can do outside chairs, picnic tables, etc. There are a number of colours to choose from. This one I'm using today is called Almond. One of my favourite colours, I have to say. And those of you who've been in the shop will know that I use it a lot because it's a very versatile, neutral colour that will go with any color scheme. As you can see, I'm moving on quite rapidly now with coverage. It's giving us such a good change of color. I'm 
just still with the grain, okay. Still with the grain, yes. Because it goes that way and then the wood's going up. So I'm just making sure I've got all the brush strokes going in the right direction of the wood. Going up to the top, of course, which we're not painting, so I've masked that up as you can see. nearly finished and then we'll move around to the front I'll just start off the front show you how that's managed and there you go good first coat coverage just picking up any drips that might have come over the edge there because we're going to work our way around just going to move and the back I'm just going to move to the front And again, I'll start the bottom plinth. One thing I want to show you is when two corners meet, you can get a puddle of paint. If I'm going like that, it will catch. You can see that. I'm going like that and it will catch. So you've just got to keep an eye. Any drips can be easily picked up and sorted. Very therapeutic. Going up to the masking tape, as you remember we masked that earlier. And then you keep going. Just one little pointer on the inside, just a, a light covering again, like we said on the drawers, because obviously the thicker the coverage, the harder the drawers will be. So just a coverage, nice thin layer. And I'm going to keep going on all the way around. And when we come back, we all finished coat number one. What I'd also like to mention is that this time, cleaning of the brush. Once I've finished, being chalk paint, it's water-based, very easy to wash out. I always wash in a slight warm water and uh, sometimes I put some washing up liquid, no harm in doing that. Clean it out, don't let it sit dry too long, it will dry out. Um, even if you have left it, soak it and wash it out, it'll be absolutely ready for the next use. So there we have it. Okay, now you can see that the first coat is done and dry. Just to let you know that it's 30 minutes for touch dry and then four hours before you can repaint. Um, it depends on your conditions. If it's a nice sunny hot day, it could be different to a, a cold rainy day, but that's the general rule. I'm going to start my second coat now. Um, it may, some pieces may need a third coat. Uh, it always depends on your piece. If it's a dark brown mahogany and you're putting a lighter color on, that might be the case. Okay, as you can see, we've now finished all the painting. I'm really, really pleased the way it's all come up and it's looking terrific. But the next stage is now to wax the top. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, just to explain, um, we've got these bits around here. This is masking tape I've just lightly put underneath. So it will just stop any bits that when I'm waxing, any bits just flicking onto the paint, so hopefully that will stop any anything like that. I'm using the Authentico dark brown wax, which will um, 
just take this a little darker and take that honeyness off that I'm looking for. So we're going to start, I will always start with the edges first, so then you can then feather those in here because we're going to do it here and feather in and then we do the top to give it that evenness. So here we go, just load the brush up with a little bit and just test it first to see what you've got. Doesn't look much at the moment. If I go along that way and then start to see what I've done. Yeah, I'm really excited about that colour already. That's lovely. I'll just feather that in so it's all going there. So we're going to have to make sure we've got the evenness on the top there. Okay, I'm happy with that for now because this is just the first coat. And now we have to work quite quickly. Working it in, going with the grain of the wood, of course. And you can see the colour already beginning to show. We're getting an, as even as we can. And obviously the second coat will even everything out on the first one. Good workout for the arms, by the way. <laughs> Just a little bit more there. And I think that will do for the first coat. And now I'll get onto the knobs and then the second coat once it's air dry. It doesn't take too long. So here we have it, the finished result. I think you'll agree it really does look a lot better from when we started. I have put a second coat of wax on, so what I'm just going to do now is buff it up. Once it's now air dry, buffing up just gives a little slight sheen which I like on my furniture. So a little bit of elbow grease. There we go. I think that well, uh, looks really nice. Nice clean cloth, lint-free cloth is the best to get this good finish. There we go. Just one thing to show you before we go, and that would be, remember we masked up everything for a clean finish, and there you can see on the drawer that it just gives a nice clean line that if the drawer is left open it looks neater even when it's a jar like that and I think in the end we've got a very useful piece and uh, I hope that's inspired you all to get cracking and start thinking about what's in your home that you can change. <laughs>